Welcome to MLB Showdown Community. I'm your guru, Colby Talithis, and this is our Play for the Card segment. This is going to be a little bit different of a Play for the Card segment because we're going to be switching up and talking about players predominantly to pitchers predominantly. In this segment, we're going to be talking mainly about those ace pitchers, those guys who are getting the custom charts, we call them. These are the elite guys. The top 10 in ERA have been getting custom cards or they're some of those odd cards, those power threes that you see around, also some of the bigger name sixes, the horses, the fours, all those guys are available. But here's a quick history lesson uh, for what we've done in years past for similar guys. In 2009, the top three in ERA were Grinky, Carpenter, and Lincecum, which is our primary stat we look for for charts. And Grinky ended up get, with that great year he had when he was with the Royals, ended up with an 18 walk, 19 single as a four. So he had a big, big out, big strikeout. A uh, very good card. Carpenter ended up being the first six we had ever made that didn't give up a double. He was 16 to 20 single, which we thought was pretty fair. You'd have he was still great. He was still elite for being the top two in ERA. But you had the ability to score runs. You could manufacture runs uh, in a, in a set that had some speed and some power. And Lincecum ended up being that power three, very similar to Randy Johnson of the 2000s. Uh, he had a 3-11 to 11 strikeout, 19 was a walk, 20 was a single, so not a lot of damage on his chart. He had that escape, uh, that, that back door, that escape route that a lot of pitchers don't have with that big strikeout. Really useful card there. Uh, and their ERAs in order were 2.16, 2.24, and 2.48 to give some perspective. King Felix in 2010 was the best in the class with a 2.27 with a great year out there for the Mariners. He also got a 4-1 to 17 like we gave Grinky for the top in ERA, but instead of giving him a walk at 18, we gave him three singles. The difference was he got an eight innings pitch as opposed to just being a seven innings pitch. So that was the little thing that he got. Josh Johnson also looking a lot like a carpenter, a big dominating player, got a six. Um, Instead of giving him all singles, though, uh, he ended up getting a 17-18 single. 19-20 was a double. So he had a little bit more, a different way of scoring runs against him, but he was the first 6 1 to 16 that I know of as a starter who was ever created for getting the number 2 in ERA. And Clay Buckle got that power 3 position, which is a 3, 1 to 18, no double. He was only 6 innings pitch, but he had a big ground ball, which made him very useful and also made him very point efficient. Uh, which made him a pretty nice card for the prize. 2011 was an odd year because we had Clayton Kershaw go number one. He was a 5, 1 to 16, uh, 17 walk, 18, 19 was a single, 18 and tw to 20 was a single. Uh, very useful card, even better than maybe the uh, the Kevin Browns that have been out there. Halliday came out as the first six, 1 to 16, who didn't give up multiple doubles, which was very useful. Uh, that was a, kind of a lifetime achievement award, which is nice because he kind of had an off year this year. And he'd had so many great years in the past. Cliff Lee getting that power three position. Three, one to 18, 19 walk, 20 single. Three to 10, big strikeout like Lincecum. Uh, so there's a little history of how we do it. Uh, what we tend to look for for those tens is we try to, or the top 10 ERAs, we try to get a six in there in some way. Uh, we usually end up with about two fives, two or three fours. Uh, a couple threes, and then we usually end up with a two. So we're trying to fit all those guys in kind of to the eye test of the top ten. So as we look at the guys who are currently in the top ten, we have Hernandez, Chieto, uh Price, Jordan Zimmerman, Kyle Loesch, R.A. Dickey, Verlander, Chris Sale, and Matt Cain, uh, with Clayton Kershaw in there coming in ten. Uh, we try to make it so that the guys who are towards the top get the better of the cards. Um, but more but more importantly is trying to be fair and look as much at the stats and try to give a card that's well representative. Some interesting stats that we can look at for making those cards um, is right now David Price who's sitting third, which if he would keep, which if he kept would probably be that power three position, uh, which is tough to tell tell who exactly is a power three. Usually you end up with a little bit more of a, a guy you would think who's not very well controlled, but Price isn't really that guy. He has pretty good control. It's, it's interesting. He might look like that Clay Buckold uh, card who back from 2010, which is going to be that three with the big ground ball, uh, that 19 walk, because David Price also has the most walks of anyone in the top 10 in ERA. And then that 20 would be a single, which make him a very useful card, a power card, 
Uh, he also has more innings pitch, so it would be like a seven inning pitch instead of a six that Kershaw, uh, that Buckholz was that year. I'm sorry. The top guy again is King Felix right now, and watching him, is he a power six? Is he a is he a six that uh, might be similar to that Roy Halladay of last year? Does he deserve a lifetime achievement award? Uh, that might be a question to be raised. Uh, Kieto in that two hole. I mean, I could see him very much being one of those power fours, four one to seventeen with uh, maybe no double. Uh, the guy right now is who I think I'd like some feedback on is a guy like R. A. Dickey, who could very much be that two hole guy. He is he is right up there. He has nine K nine strikeouts per nine innings, which puts him uh, right up there with Verlander. He's just about tied with him as far as strikeouts per nine inning. But being a knuckleballer, do people perceive him as generally having less control? Um, I know I do, but having watched him, he seems to have a lot of control. So should he be a power two, a power three? Um, that's really something for you guys to decide. And leave your comments down below on that. Verlander, again, always seems to be in control, maybe a four or five. Potentially a six. The two interesting guys here will be Verlander and Hernandez. Both of those guys are going to be near eight inning pitch guys, uh, which in a class that's probably going to be a little bit more tame because the ERAs are a little higher. The lowest ERA now is a 2.43 with Hernandez, which could easily go down. But in 2009, Greinke was a 2.16, Felix was a 2.27 uh, in 2010, and Kershaw was a 2.28 in 2011. And Verlander won the MVP in 2011. So it's going to take Felix a good drop or somebody a good drop to get something really elite. All that to say is that this is a very fluid system. We try to make good cards that well represent their guys uh, and try to give you guys a good picture. I know a lot of us have a tough time imagining what a power six, a power three looks like, what a horse looks like in a card. A horse is a little bit easier for me to imagine, but like those, those threes, the twos, it's hard, and sometimes we need a little input. We want to know what you guys think, so please leave your comments below or send us comments on Twitter at MLB Showdown Guru. If you guys like me to spotlight any other player, please don't feel uh, shy about sending me something on Twitter or on the blog. I'd love to highlight any pitcher or any hitter now that we're going to be kind of not focusing on hitters for a little bit. If there's a player you would like to kind of see an update on who's hot, please let us know. And remember, guys, to play for the card.